Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelf because it's the only way to prove to my father that I'm worthy of a place on the crew. Today we are talking about Bex Hogan's Isles of Storm and Sorrow series. I always just call them the Viper series or that series with a bunch of V's in the titles. But we're talking about them today. Just let's enjoy some shiny foil. There we go. Some quick disclaimers before we start, as always. Uh, I bought all three of the books in the series for myself. Um, I think this is a fairy loot edition, so it's slightly different from the actual cover in that it is vaguely purple instead of vaguely navy. Uh, this was a gift, I think, then it was a gift, and I bought Viper, but I bought it as a ebook because I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about the series and if I was gonna hang on to it. So that's what, this is what Viper looks, Vulture. Vulture looks like. There it is. As nice and shiny and kind of almost middle grade-y as these covers may look, this is quite a dark series and would involve quite a lot of content warnings. I will link the story graph particularly for the first one below if you'd like to check that out. Spoiler warning, I'm going to be talking about all three books in the series as a whole. I'm not going to reveal any major spoilers for that series, but obviously if you do want to go into this set of books knowing absolutely nothing, you may want to pause this video and come back when you've read the first one at the very least. Um, but I'm not going to spoil anything intentionally for you, just, you know, you know the drill at this point. This is a YA fantasy series that first started with Viper in 2019, followed with Venom in 2020, and 2021 we had Vulture. It's swashbuckling, it's dark, it's got a lot of YA tropes to it. Let's go, let me tell you all about the author and the book. I will link Bex Hogan's website below, but raised on a healthy diet of fantasy and fairy tales, Bex Hogan has spent much of her life lost in daydreams, writing her stories down with a natural progression, and now she enjoys sharing her time between living in the real world and escaping to her imagination. A Cornish girl at heart, Bex now lives in Cambridgeshire with her husband, two beautiful daughters, and crazy cocker spaniel. She might be found riding horses, talking to her plants, or eating marzipan. Or not. Just, there's something about, like, in this series, you can tell Bex Hogan grew up near the sea, uh, and I, that speaks to me at my core. Um, just, I, I, I liked her biography and I wanted to read it to you. So I'm going to read you the plot summary for book one, and then I'll, I'll touch on the other two. 17-year-old uh, Marianne is fated to one day become the Viper, defender of the Twelve Isles, but the reigning Viper stands in her way. Corrupt and merciless, he prowls the seas in his warship, killing with impunity, leaving only pain and suffering in his wake. He's the most dangerous man on the ocean, and he is Marianne's father. She was born to protect the islands, but can she fight for them if it means losing her family, her home, the boy she loves, and perhaps even her life? A brave heroine, an impossible dilemma, an epic new fantasy trilogy set on the high seas. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. I can't really talk about the plot of book two and three without revealing the ending of to book one, so suffice to say it carries on from there, Marianne is still our main character. I mentioned this being quite a dark series and having some quite dark themes and dilemmas, as the blurb suggested. I actually think that's a huge selling point for this series. I really like that this book doesn't, or this series even, doesn't pull punches when it comes to exploring some of the, like, darker aspects of potential piracy. It's not exactly piracy, but I'm going to call them pirate-themed books anyway. It makes sense. Book one has quite a graphic description of keel hauling. Yeah, that's quite a intense thing to depict in a book that has quite this like middle grade-esque cover. Hmm. But I personally really appreciate it and I think it's a book that doesn't shy away from those really quite difficult themes, which in quite short books is very impressive. Uh, and as the books went on, the more I kind of went, okay, yes, this is more than... I want to say more than the cover leads it to believe because that makes it look like I really judge books based on their covers but I just think there is, there is more meat to these books than you would have thought. And I also I'm not saying that something has to have like dark elements to it to be kind of like meaty or worth reading or anything because you can read something that's just very casual and she's coming back. It's a cool setting I really liked gradually learning more about the setting as the books go on. Uh, I think particularly in book early book one and late book three you really get a sense of like what's happening here. There's a lot of uh, magic that's just sort of part of the world. Um, I might have liked a little bit more detail, but again, these books are quite short. It's not really something that I would expect from this type of a series. If this was like a big epic sprawling fantasy, maybe I would expect more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool setting. There's some fun stuff going on. I like the way that the magic interacts with the more kind of mundane stuff. I just... I found it very enjoyable. There's also the sense of there being a lot of history to this place, which I appreciate. Um, often in books like this, you'll just get the situation as it is now and maybe like a touch of, in the past it was like this. Whereas this, you can really feel the the journey that led them to this point. I mentioned this being a little bit tropey and I think that that's definitely a selling point. There are some moments in this series that really lean into some YA tropes, not in an annoying way and not in a cliched way, but just in an enjoyable way. I really liked reading the series. I liked seeing those things that I was expecting to happen, happen. It was just, it was enjoyable. If you really don't like tropes, obviously that, that might not be a selling point for you. And I don't think I can talk about specifically what they are without 
it becoming a little bit spoilery. Um, but they're there. <laughs> some things to bear in mind, uh, some things that maybe I think might make you not want to read this. I think Mariana's a main character, like I really like the cast of characters in this series, but Mariana's a main character can be a little bit annoying and I don't really know why. And almost always when I find a character annoying, it's because I'm seeing some facet of myself that I don't like in that character. So take that with a pinch of salt. Um, I think that sometimes the choices she makes are a bit irritating and sometimes she just feels like one of those characters who could just solve a lot of her problems by talking about them more. And I get why she wouldn't do that, but I did, just at times I got very frustrated with her and overall across the whole series, I think she's a good character, but there are moments where I'm just like, oh, stop it. <laughs> I mentioned if you don't like tropes, you might not like this. I don't think it's too, too tropey. It's not kind of like Raw by Cora Carmack or anything. The other thing I'd mention is I think book two is definitely the weakest of the books. I really liked the first part of book three and maybe like the middle chunk of book one were my favorite sections. Book two, I found a real slog. And I don't know if that's because of where I was at the time or to do with the, the just the second book problem. I found it just really drained me. I personally feel controversial opinion. You could read book one and three and be quite happy. I don't think book two served the series too much, but feel free to correct me on that in the comments if you love book two. I did also, uh, how do you remember, minor spoiler warning, I guess. It's not talking about a specific thing that happens, but it's talking about a thing that happens, so you'll know to expect that thing. I, I skip ahead to here if you want to avoid that. Um, this book does a thing that I really dislike, which is using a character death as a magical kind of plot button that just solves a problem because the problem is gone because the problem died. Um, I don't love that. I think it feels like it's a way to solve a problem. I don't think it's the most interesting way to solve a problem. And I think it just sort of, it made it feel like this had been written into a corner and they'd run out of time to fix it. So it was just like, right, we'll kill off that character and it'll be fine. You know, just something that bothered me a little bit. Some comparisons if you want other things to read. I do have a whole video of uh, seafaring related books that I will link if you would like to see that. Um, the Bone Ships by RJ Barker is my obvious comparison if you want like an equally emotionally destroying but much more adult book that features piracy and becoming a crew and backstabbing and all of that stuff. If you want even more tropey YA pirate, my dad is terrible content, <laughs> Trisha Levenseller's Daughter of the Pirate King is a good time. I will have a overbook video for that in a couple, few months, I guess. Um, what else? Are there any other things that I would recommend? What else happens on the sea or involves daddy issues? Oh, what about um, Mermaid the Witch in the Sea is just a really good queer on the sea story. I haven't brought that up in a while, but Maggie Takuda Hall. It's a good time. Should you read this? Should you pick copies of these up? Am I going to buy a third one so I have matching sets? The answer is no. I'm actually going to possibly unhaul these, I think. Uh, not because I didn't enjoy them at all. It, it's nothing to do with that. It's just that they're not something I particularly want to reread and I don't really want to own the third one. So then I just own book one and two. Book two was such a slog. I'm okay. My suggestion is if you would like to read these, if this sounds good, they are well written. They are enjoyable reads. I personally don't think you need to own them. I would suggest looking for them in the library because they are guaranteed to be there. They will be there. They will have copies. And as I say, my, my private suggestion is to read book one and three. I know no one's going to do that, but you could skip book two. It, you'd be fine. Have you read these? Do you have plans to? Do you own copies of them? What are your thoughts and feelings? I would love to know. What are your general thoughts on second books in series? I'm always interested plonk those things down in the comments below while you're down there commenting. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media, come hang out on Discord where we have a wonderful time talking about books. All of that's down there. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's done a piece of bloopers now. Welcome back to the... <sighs> Spoiler warning, the dog is coming to approach. Hi. No. No, we've talked about this. We it cannot be every video. It, it just cannot be every video. But you're so pretty. I wouldn't mind if you hung out here, but you sit right next to the microphone and make gross sounds. It's like the opposite of ASMR. No. No. No, you stay in your bed. It's just very casual and she's coming back. She's returning for another attempt. <laughs>